In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about whether or not to get two 100 amp hour batteries or one big 200 amp hour battery. What's going on guys? My name is Dan, this is Freely Roaming. So I was sent this Golden Mate 200 amp hour battery. This is their model LFP12200. This is basically their, their sort of baseline 200 amp hour battery. No frills, BMS that has all the protections that you need but it does not have self heating or low temperature cutoff. But you're gonna get probably the best bang for your buck if you're looking for about 200 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate to install into your camper. However, 100 amp hour batteries are much more prevalent in the market. So you can go out and look for deals, maybe get a couple of mismatched ones, and maybe you can buy used ones and put them together. But a lot of people have asked me whether or not it's okay to connect them in parallel or in series. So I'm gonna use this opportunity while I'm showing you guys this battery to explain sort of my experience and what I think what you should and should not do when you're connecting multiple batteries together. So before we do that, let's start sort of from the basics a little bit. Let's talk about nominal voltage and also amp hour capacity. So nominal voltage for lithium iron phosphate chemistry when you have batteries that are designed for 12 volt systems is 12.8 volt and for a basic example, you have a 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. That's sort of your generic run of the mill basic battery pack. You're gonna have 1,280 watt hours of capacity in it. And the reason watt hours is a better way to sort of describe battery capacity than amp hours, which is what we're used to, is because battery voltage varies when it's fully charged to when it's fully depleted. In a lithium iron phosphate battery, you can go all the way from 14.4 volts or even a slightly higher voltage than that, all the way down to about 10 volts. So when you're pulling one amp at 14.4 volts, you're pulling actually 14.4 watts because volts times amps gives you watts. So 14.4 volts times one amp is 14.4 watts. Now down at the bottom end of that sort of battery discharge curve, you have 10 volts. And 10 volts times one amp only gives you 10 watts. So a much more accurate gauge of actual power consumed is using watts because it doesn't matter what your volts or amps are. A watt is an absolute unit of measurement when it comes to energy. A lithium iron phosphate battery at 12.8 volts, what it's basically saying is that when you discharge it, you're gonna get an average of 12.8 volts given a range of voltage with a specific current draw. Even though your voltage might vary from the top into the bottom end, when you draw 100 amps from a 100 amp hour battery, you should get 1,280 watt hours. So that said, when people want to double their capacity, generally speaking, they want to double their capacity without increasing that nominal voltage. So there's two ways to connect batteries together. It's either in parallel or in series. When you connect your two batteries in parallel, meaning connecting the positive to positive, negative to negative, what you're doing is you're, you're increasing your overall amp hour capacity while not increasing any of your voltage. And when you connect them in series, which means you connect it kind of like a daisy chain, you go negative from one to positive of the other, and then the other two that are not connected, which are positive and negative, are your new terminals to connect to your system. When you connect two 12.8 volt batteries together in series, you're doubling the voltage. For the most part, in a camper, that's not what you want to do. And the reason why somebody want to do that is if they're trying to use thinner wires, because higher volts means lower amps, given the same amount of draw. If you have an appliance that uses a lot of power, to use a 24 volt system versus a 12 volt system, assuming that it's compatible with both, you don't have as much current going through the same wires when you have higher voltage. So this is kind of where the question arises. Is it safe to connect lithium iron phosphate batteries, two, different, two separate batteries, either in parallel or in series? And the answer is yes, for the most part, and no, in some circumstances. For the most part, you can connect them if you know what you're doing. 
The ideal situation is that you have identical batteries, same make, same model, ideally made around the same time. Even though the battery chemistry is the same, there's some slight variances between manufacturing so that some battery produced during one batch versus another batch can have variances. You want these two batteries that are connected in series or parallel to be as close as possible. And the reason is you want the batteries that are connected to discharge and charge at the exact same rate, meaning as the batteries gets depleted, you want them to go down, ideally to the same voltage as they drop below. Because otherwise, you're going to have one battery that's near completely discharged, while another battery still has capacity in it. And a couple things can happen when that's the case. One is that you're going to lose out on the capacity of your battery, so you won't be able to use it all, because your BMS will trip one of these batteries, and it'll say, sorry, this battery is now too low voltage, we can't use it anymore, while the other one still has capacity in it. The other situation is when you're charging. If you're charging a battery, and it's got multiple batteries in a pack, as it comes up, you want them to come up at the same voltage. If one gets fully charged before the other one, you may have problems with your charger that says, oh, this battery is fully charged, so let's cut off charging. Meanwhile, this battery still has room to take on more power and it's not going to happen. So these situations are based on what the BMS, which is the battery management system inside these lithium iron phosphate batteries are doing. These BMSs are monitoring the individual cell voltage. So just like you have multiple packs in your battery bank, each pack also has individual cells that the BMS is monitoring. It won't let each individual cell get too high or too low, and the BMS job is to cut off charge or discharge in that situation. So by having the same make and model of the battery ensures that you have identical BMSs that are in these battery packs that are programmed the same way, that have the same voltage cutoff, both at the top end and on the low end, so that if a battery charger or an appliance that's drawing power pulls a certain amount of power and makes the battery dip below a certain voltage, they should cut off at the same time. And you may say, well, I had lead acid batteries in the past that are connected in parallel and I never had any problems. I never had any issues with these batteries cutting off or not cutting off. Well, that's because lead acid batteries don't have BMSs. Lead acid batteries are a lot more sort of tolerant to the conditions. They do degrade and you can damage them but they don't nearly have the sensitivity that lithium batteries do. So with lithium batteries, having battery management systems on board is the reason why you want to be careful when you connect them together, whether in parallel or in series. So in situations where you're trying to use a battery in a 12 volt system, I recommend to always connect them in parallel so you maintain your 12 volt system, especially if you have a camper that's already set up and has all 12 volt appliances like fans and lights and water pumps and refrigerators. So let's, let's talk about this Golden Mate model LFP12200 battery. As always, I've tested this battery for its capacity. I charged this battery up to 100% and ran a discharge test at 10 amps and this battery actually did not pull 100% of its capacity. So out of the 2,560 watt hour capacity, it pulled 2,515. It's not terrible, it's really close, but at the same time, I do wish that this would have pulled more than capacity, which is what some of the batteries that I've been testing in the past have been able to do. So just to give you some specs about how a battery like this compares to two 100 amp hour batteries. So the advantages are this is gonna be a little bit smaller and just a little bit lighter because you're saving some enclosure. You're also having just one BMS instead of two BMSs. Also by having a 200 amp hour battery in one enclosure, with just one positive, one negative terminal, there's less wires to buy. You don't have to worry about the wires that interconnect the two batteries. So it's a lot easier to install. So the dimension of this battery is 20 inches, 20.55 inches long this way, 8.58 inches wide, and 9.45 inches tall. And that is compared to a standard 100 amp hour battery that's 12.83 inches long, slightly narrower at 6.81, and about the same height at 8.46. And this weighs in at just under 50 pounds, 49.6. It's not heavy at all by a battery that has this amount of capacity. You can easily handle this with these carry handles that are built into the battery. It's also gonna be a little bit cheaper than buying multiple packs. 
you can buy this battery on Amazon right now for with tax and shipping I'm here in California for about $580 that's compared to a hundred amp hour batteries that sells for about $300 each so you're gonna save about hundred dollars to get about the same capacity when you buy a larger battery so there is a couple of downsides to this one downside is that because it has one BMS it's not gonna have as much of a maximum draw so with a 100 amp hour battery with a max output of 100 amps, when you connect them in parallel, you can double that max draw to 200 amps because each BMS is able to sort of load balance that draw and it can output 200 amps. This one, for example, has a max continuous discharge current of 120 amps, which is still a lot. 120 amps at 12.8 volts, that's 1536 watts. So you can use this battery to power a 1500 watt uh, induction stovetop, no problem. So that's slightly shy of the 2560 watts you'll be able to draw when you have two 100 amp hour batteries in parallel. But if your goal is to get more runtime out of your battery, meaning have more batteries so you don't have to recharge them as frequently, not necessarily just be able to pull more power at any given moment, I think this is the way to go. It takes up less space, it's cheaper, it's easier to set up. So that's it. This is the Golden Mate model LFP12200 battery. And for a lot of people that have been asking me about, well, 100 amp hour is not quite enough, what should I get? I say get a big 200 amp hour battery. This should be enough for most people, especially if you're just doing some casual camping and you're not using induction stovetop for your primary method of cooking. 200 amp hour is a lot of power. And like most lithium iron phosphate batteries of high quality, it's gonna give you a lot of cycle life. The manufacturer has this at 5,000 cycles, and even if it only gets half of that, we're talking about a decade worth of service. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.